This video is sponsored by Displayland. Today we're going to be covering how to create the background in the scene using PBR textures, splat maps, and photo scans using all free tools. The robot is from a previous tutorial, which is linked in the description. Now included with this tutorial are a number of free assets, which I have linked to in the description below. So if you want to follow along, please pause this video and download those assets to get started. Now these assets here were created with Displayland, a photo scan app that you can download on your phone for free. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to hide these elements for now and I'm going to add a plane. So I'll add a mesh plane there. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to right click that. I'm going to subdivide. I'm going to crank that up. And then I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to do that one more time. And that'll give us a lot of geometry to work with there. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change device to GPU or CPU here and I'm going to make it experimental there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the subdivision. I'm going to add a subdivision surface and because we have experimental turned on you should be able to click adaptive here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come to material. We're going to create a new material. We'll call this ground. And we'll scroll down here to settings and what we want to do under settings is change displacement from bump only to displacement and bump. Now, if you downloaded those free assets, what we can do here is apply our ground texture to this plane here, which has this principled node, which you're going to need that for this next step. You should have Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which is in your preferences up here, and it comes with Blender, so just make sure that's enabled. What we're going to do is we're going to click this node, and you have to have that node selected. We're going to hit Control shift t and then we can go ahead in here, and what this will do is actually take all of our PBR texture maps and if we click those you see here that it will put them all here into the right slots for us and that's just a major time saver. So I'm actually going to come up here I'm going to turn the specular down on this because I don't really want specular on this ground. I'm going to duplicate this node here and with this node selected I'm going to hit Control shift T and then I'm going to select a second ground texture. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a splat map to mix these textures. So let's go ahead, drag this out here. We'll drag our displacement out here. Delete this displacement down here. We're going to add a mix RGB node here. And then we'll grab this one and put that up there. Now up here, we will add a mix shader node. So let's go ahead add a mix shader node, and then we'll grab our principal nodes and pipe those into that. And you want to make sure that the same one is on top and the other one is on bottom as displacement so that those will match. And then we're going to add that into here. Now what we're going to do is if, again, you downloaded those free assets, we're going to use what is called a splat map. So splat maps are used in games to mix textures together. So for example, you can grab a terrain and you can mix three or four different types of terrains and it'll use the splat map information to decide which texture appears where and that just kind of helps you get a more natural look a lot quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that splat map over into here. I'm going to change this to non-color. Then I'm going to pipe that into the factor there and I'm going to pipe that into the factor down here. So what I'm going to do now is switch over to rendered view and we won't be able to see the displacement until we switch over to rendered view because it is in the node setup here and not on a modifier. When we switch over we can see that the displacement is quite high so I'm going to lower mine to something like 0.1 and let's just see what that looks like when it updates. We can actually add a color ramp here and let's go ahead and also pipe that down to here. And then we can use that color ramp to kind of determine how much of our texture we want to show. So we can see that we can have kind of more leaves showing there if that's what we want, which I actually am going to leave that up a little bit because as you saw earlier, our background asset had a lot of leaves in it. So that kind of finishes the materials for this ground. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this over here so that this fills our frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm first going to add an HDR so that we can see our material better in render view. So I'm going to come up here to the world, make sure the surface on the background. I'm going to click color here. It's a little button down here at the end. I'm going to hit environment texture. And then I'm going to load the HDRI, which again, I have linked in the description below. So there we go. We kind of have our ground here and we have our leaves back here and we have our rock here. So let's switch back here to material view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to front view here by tapping one. And I'm going to grab this ground plane here. And then I'm going to bring this 
over here so that the ground kind of matches over here what we have and you can see that there's going to be a little bit of a discrepancy there and you can work through and add more models here you can photo scan more assets you can hide that there's a lot you can do there but in our case we're going to be pushing that out of focus because like i said although it's a pretty good photo scan for your phone it is still a phone photo scan so you have to expect that there's going to be slightly lower resolution so it's not going to be our hero asset per se so let's go ahead come in here We'll grab some of these vertices here and we're just going to kind of pull those up so that they kind of lip over the edge there and kind of hide the fact that that ground doesn't match. Now what I'm going to do is just switch to sculpt mode really quick. Just kind of use shift and click across there to kind of smooth that out. If you want, you can go ahead in here and you can actually sculpt in and smooth that out a lot more. Or if you want, you can actually come in here and even introduce some more noise. And a quick way to do that is if you switch to edit mode, you can grab this fall off up here. You can grab a vertice and then just with the influence up, you can kind of go around and just grab a few small things there. And that'll give you kind of like a rougher edge again, making it kind of blend into the background. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some rocks to this plane. So we will take our rock and we're just going to move that under our scene for now. You can also put that in a collection if you want, and that's another way to hide it. But for now, this will work. And what we're going to do to this plane is we're going to come down here to particle. I'm going to add a particle system. We're going to add hair. I'm going to rename this rocks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on advanced here to give us more options. We're going to come down to render. We're going to choose to render as an object. And then for our instance object, we're going to check rock. Now this will place rocks all over our plane. And you can see that with the way I've placed the origin, the rocks are already intersecting there. So when I did the photo scan, there was really no way for me to get a photo scan of the bottom of the object. So what I did is I placed the rock origin point a little bit higher up so that you can see here when it's on the ground and it intersects with the ground, you can see that it's kind of pushing through there so that you don't see that there is no actual bottom to the rock because it's just kind of intersecting with the geometry. But as you can see here, everything looks kind of uniform. So let's go ahead and change that up a bit. First of all, we probably don't need that many rocks. Let's go ahead, let's start with 100 and see if we want to add more or less later. So if you look at the settings here, you can actually play with this to change the scale of your rock. I actually like the default setting that it's at here, which is 0.05 but I'm gonna turn scale randomness up to one, and some of those look a little too small, so I'm gonna do 0.5, and that'll give me a bit of variation in the size of my rocks. Now I wanna add some variation into rotation, so I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna check rotation, I'm going to flip this down. My orientation axis is at velocity hair, my randomizer is at zero, phase is at zero, everything here should be zero. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn phase up to one, and that's going to rotate everything there, and then I'm going to randomize the phase by one and what that'll do is kind of create random rotations of the rock everywhere while maintaining the velocity of the hair. So what we'll do is we'll come up here to the emission. We're gonna come down to source. Here we have emit from faces, which is fine in our case because we have so many faces and we have distribution jittered. I'm gonna change that to random. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn this down. I don't want quite that many rocks. So let's actually try one fourth of that. And I think that's good for me. And because I have so few rocks, I'm actually going to come back here to render and play with that scale a bit. So I'm going to try 0.1 and that'll get me bigger rocks. And what you can do is you can turn this down to five and that'll give us just a few rocks there. And you can play with the seed here until you get a placement of the rocks you like. And I think that looks nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the plus sign here. I'm going to select the particle settings for the rock. And then I'm going to hit this new button here. And I'm going to call this small rocks. And then I'm going to turn this back up to 25. And then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to turn my scale down to 0 0.035. And then now you can see we kind of have a mixture of small rocks and big rocks that we can use here. Let's go ahead and get a subject in here to put our camera on. So I'm gonna import the robot from my previous tutorial. You can import any object you want or just follow along with what you have. So once you have your kind of scene set up and your subject there, what you wanna do is add a camera. So I have my camera set to 1080 by 1080. I'm gonna snap into camera view. I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kind of walk the camera here. And what I'm going to do is put the camera down at kind of a low angle. And what I'm trying to do is just ensure that this background fully covers there so I can actually scale that up a bit and I can even scale this out a tiny bit if I want. 
and I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is just mess with the framing here a bit. So if I come into the camera view and the render view, we can see that this background leaves right here, the rock looks pretty great, but because the leaves are kind of difficult for photo scanning to capture, you can tell that there's a little bit of low res there because you would have to spend many, many hours going around and recording those leaves. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use depth of field to just kind of push that out of focus. So we'll grab our camera and then we will click depth of field here and you can play with the f-stop down here. Now by default, Blender will give you a photorealistic interpretation of your camera settings, and by default it's to 2.8, but you can crank those a little lower if you wanna kinda of break the limit. So let's come here to Focus Object, let's click our robot, and then I'm gonna turn my f-stop down to 1.5, and we can see that's really kinda of pushing the background out of focus and helping things blend together. So now I just wanna add an extra light into this scene. So I'm gonna pop out here, and I wanna add a sunlight to the scene. So what I'll do is I'll add a sunlight and I'm gonna switch here into front view. I'm gonna grab that, pull that up, kind of rotate that. And what I wanna do is kind of hit this back angle here so that it looks like the sunlight's kind of coming from behind. Now we have this photo geometry here, so that's gonna block some of our sunlight. So let's just move it over here so that we can kind of see where we're hitting it at. And it looks like if we do it from about there, we should be able to hit the back of our little robot. So now I'm gonna crank the light up really high, and that's just something I do so that I can tell where the light's coming from. So I can tell that that's the direction I want the light to come from. Let's turn this down to about 50 and see how that looks. It's still a little bright, so let's lower that all the way down to 10. And let's go ahead up here to the color. Let's give this a slightly yellow look and that'll just add a tiny bit of realism and also introducing some colors into the lights will also kind of help tie these scenes together. You can see that now they both kind of carry that yellow wash. Now with the sunlight, you wanna be careful on how much yellow you add because adding too much can make it look a little oversaturated and kind of fake. I like to take the angle and I like to turn it up around five or so, sometimes up to 10 or 15. And you don't wanna crank this angle too high because then it starts to get kind of unrealistic on how the shadows wrap around. But by cranking it up, you can see that again in a little bit of a softer shadow there. I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try something higher like 25 so that we get an even softer shadow. Let's go ahead and add one more light just for a bit of character. So let's go ahead and we will add an area light. And what we will do is we will take this area right from the front view and we're going to rotate this up about 90 degrees, but I want a slight high angle there. Then we're gonna to come to the top view here. We're gonna rotate this about there and we're gonna hit that robot from the side with just a splash of color. Now, since we haven't kind of placed in a realistic scene, I'm not gonna play with too many unrealistic colors. I'm just again gonna kind of play with that warm color palette and yeah, I kind of like this. It gives it more of kind of a warmer touch there. And let's go ahead, let's turn this up to 25. There's a few tips and tricks to kind of help you quickly make your own environments in Blender. So let's go over how you can use the Display Land app so that you can record your own environments if you'd like to do that and create your own scene. Let's go through how to use the Display Land app. Models are created via a technique called photogrammetry, which traditionally involves photographing an object from a multitude of angles and then processing the images using specialized software. With Display Land, you just record a video of the subject on your phone and all the processing happens automatically in the cloud. Let's go through how to use Display Land. First, download Display Land on your iOS or Android device and sign up using your phone number or an email address. If you can't see the app in the store, your device is likely not supported. If your phone is older or more affordable and does not have AR Core, it will not work. Capturing is as simple as opening the app, pointing at your subject and recording. However, here are some tips to get a better result. Ensure that your subject is not moving as you won't be able to track unique features on a moving object quickly enough. You'll want to avoid reflective surfaces and large blank surfaces because the app needs those details to track and record geometry. Objects with a lot of holes or cutouts such as trees or fences will be difficult to record. Though not impossible, it's hard to get a good rotation view to get an angle of everywhere that there is a hole in the object. Be wary of shadows and moving lights. They may introduce artifacts in the textures on your model. To ensure you get a good photo scan, move slowly and steadily. Dots will begin to appear to symbolize detail markers that the app uses to define your geometry. Walk around it multiple times and try to record it from every angle. A good start is walking around your subject from a high angle, mid angle, and low angle. Keep doing this until the bar is filled to the minimum level. You'll want to stay about 36 
six feet away from your subject, but also get in close and get a little further away to get plenty of detail. The further you can fill the bar, the better. The bottom left icon will show you a map to give you an idea of how much of your scene you have recorded. Tap it to switch between views. Once you're done recording, tap the center button to end your capture. Add a title and location, both of which can be edited later. Choose if you want to upload now or later, and once you've uploaded your model, display one will process the model for you. Most often, this will only take a few minutes, but if it's a large scene, it could take up to a few hours. Display Land will send you a notification when your model is ready. You can review the draft and decide if you want to publish it or not. You can also edit your model if you'd like here. Once you've published, you can view your model on the app. Alongside other scans, people have uploaded. Some are really cool. If you want, you can share your model through other apps, or you can download your model to use it in another 3D application. The quickest way to do this is to share your model to your own email address, log in, and click download. That's all for today's tutorial. Make sure to tag me in your creations on Instagram. I love seeing what the talented people in this community make from these tutorials, and oftentimes I'll share them to my own page. Thank you for watching.